Let's explain for you now the route that Nancy Pelosi took to get to Taiwan. There was a lot of speculation whether China would allow her to actually land in Taipei, but they did. There was no stopping her or blocking her. And to show you the flight path which we track live here on India Today, from the United States on July 30th, this is, remember, a multi-Asia tour that Nancy Pelosi took up. She first made her way to Singapore, the very next day to Malaysia, and then to Taiwan. Even in Taiwan, it's a brief 24-hour visit. But this particular flight path that she took, it led to endless speculation and, believe it or not, actually broke records. Because on flight radar, there were scores of people who were tracking this live. The most number of people in history to have tracked a flight path live and so closely. So much so that the website kept crashing. But this is how she made her way to Taiwan. Remember that later today she will be leaving. Brief visit to each of these areas, to Singapore, Malaysia and then to Taiwan. But let's tell you about how the world has reacted. I mentioned earlier about Two nations, Russia and North Korea, actually backing China. They've slammed the United States over Pelosi's Taiwan visit and sided with China. Russia's foreign ministry called Pelosi's visit a clear provocation and also went on to say, interestingly, that China had the right to take measures to protect its sovereignty. North Korea has called Pelosi's visit imprudent interference of U.S. in China's internal matters. North Korea has also to quote, vehemently denounced any external forces interference in the issue of Taiwan and expressed full support for China, which is a major ally for them and an economic lifeline. China's UK ambassador, Zheng Zeguang, vowed severe consequences because there's a lot of buzz that British lawmakers could visit Taiwan as well. Britain's House of Commons Foreign Affairs Committee was reportedly planning a visit to Taiwan in November this year. And it's over that that China has issued a warning already, saying don't do it. Japan has also expressed concerns over China's Taiwan Strait military drills. Japan's stand is very, very clear. They side with Taiwan. Let's take this across to Geeta Mohan, a foreign affairs editor. Geeta, not surprising that the likes of Russia and North Korea have chosen to back China. Russia's uh, reaction particularly is very, very interesting because it will be seen in the context of what happened between Russia and Ukraine. And it is in those circumstances because there too it was the United States NATO influence that prompted Russia to take that step. Here Russia is saying that China has the right to respond. Well, that's right. Russia coming out in support of, uh, uh, of uh, China is uh, something that is not of, out of ordinary. These are allies. They have stood by each other. Uh, imagine not having China support uh, during a time when Russia was invading Ukraine. That would have been uh, one of the harshest uh, 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 situations for Russia uh, if China would not have come out in support of Russia. Uh, the way the uh, economy, Russian economy, was managed in China and continues to is something, th uh, is the reason why we see now that Russia is coming out in support of China. The isolation of Russia and China by the United States of America in particular and the West uh, is, uh, is seen as, uh, as only to U.S.'s advantage. And that's the reason why the statement that is coming out from Russia uh, is, uh, is, speaks volumes of uh, how they view the West, how they view America and America's approach towards countries in this part of the world and the region. Having said that, Taiwan has the right to freedom, democracy, and sovereignty, territorial integrity. And that is what Taiwan is fighting for. Which delegation who should be going to Taiwan should be only Taiwan's decision. And that's what Taiwan is steadfastly now trying to project. Uh, you see the president's uh, speech, Akshita, very clearly spelled out that this is exactly what they wanted to do. They want recognition. They want engagement. And they want prosperity and security and safety being where they are uh, but the ramifications and implications again we're saying this because we do not know what are the next steps apart from the few announcements that have been made of military operations live fire uh, exercises around Taiwan but also the economic decisions that have that have been taken that you've already uh, uh, spoken of and yeah. those economic decisions for now might seem small but could hurt Taiwan because they're looking at stopping doing business with Taiwan for mm -hmm. now not importing but if they stop exporting that also will be a huge problem then uh, you know one of the questions that we come across quite a bit is when Taiwan is such a small island nation when compared to China 
Why can't China just invade Taiwan, take over, ensure reunification like they intend? Shivarur explains why that hasn't happened and why perhaps it won't that easily. If China attacks Taiwan, it won't just be Taiwan defending because Taiwan has very powerful allies. Because if attacked, the United States as well as Japan have committed to entering the battle and defending Taiwan. So let's get that out of the way. Taiwan is not alone in this fight despite being a tiny little, uh, tiny little island. Third point, Ty the Taiwan Strait is 128 kilometers at its narrowest point. So it's not like Taiwan is just next door. There's a fair bit of ocean to go across to reach Taiwan. Remember, Taiwan isn't just some ramshackle island. It has advanced air force and air defense assets, fighter aircraft, Patriot missiles, all kinds of very, very advanced weaponry supplied by the United States. The in invading force, that is China in this case, will need to move most of its troops and occupying forces by sea if it wants to invade. The invading force would therefore be necessarily slow and therefore vulnerable to anti-ship attacks from Taiwan. And Taiwan is bristling with anti-ship weaponry. The cities and targets in Taiwan are majorly spread out. So it's not like there are very, very few targets that can be engaged. There are all, all the military bases and cities are hugely spread out, so it's difficult where to attack from. The western edge of Taiwan, that is the edge of Taiwan that faces China, is a very riverine area with cliffs and canals, and therefore it does not afford an opportune or optimum area to attack from. And that's the one that China will have to look at. There are very few beaches for possible Chinese amphibious landings on the island of Taiwan. So that's another big, big hurdle if China wants to uh, you know, take Taiwan by force. There are many, apart from the main island of Taiwan, there are many small Taiwanese islets in the Taiwan Strait which have huge numbers of anti-ship and air defenses as well as radars which are constantly trained and looking at China and Chinese movements. It would be very difficult for the People's Liberation Army, Air Force, Navy to seize the ports and airstrips in Taiwan without simply destroying them. And once they destroy them, they will have no further use for them. So it's a, it's a huge paradox. If they want to take control of those crucial infrastructural points, the seaports and the airports, they can't do it without a fight, and with a fight they'll be destroyed, and therefore they probably won't have any more use for them.